Hi guys, welcome to Tick Back Time. Today I have a dive watch review for you guys from Jonathan Broughton and this is the long shot model. So this is a 42mm case diameter watch and it features a ceramic bezel, a seagull 1812 movement as well as 300 meters of water resistance. So before I get into the review, what I want to do is share with you guys how this watch came packaged. So when you receive your watch, you will be given this envelope and this envelope will contain some paperwork. So let me just quickly show you what it does. And uh, yeah, so you'll get this, this uh, pamphlet or this brochure that will teach you how to use your watch if you're new to automatic watches uh, you can access your warranty as well and one thing about Jonathan Broughton watches is that they provide a really good warranty uh, I believe it's 24 months for all of their watches and up to five years for their automatic watches so I'm very glad that this company is standing behind that product you know so uh, yeah this is definitely respectable in the industry uh, where you have fr frequently just one year warranty on their on watches yep so what else is here you'll get a nice little decal Jonathan Broughton yeah just a nice decal and uh, I believe there is also a warranty card here uh, yes so this is the warranty card yeah five years international warranty so that is really awesome um, I can't remember when was the last time I get I got a five-year warranty from you know the a non a non luxury watch brand and this is the the box that it comes in so it's a huge box as you can tell this is the outer paper sleeve and inside this is what you get i'm so sorry that it's a little bit dusty you know well it's, it's a glossy wood material which which yeah it, it can get fingerprints and dust but for a watch of this price point which is uh, over 400 dollars I think this is really an amazing way to package their the, the, the watches. It's just, it, you only really see this sort of packaging from uh, more luxury watch brands and perhaps uh, just a couple of micro brands uh, who will go the extra mile for this. So the packaging aside, I can get back into the watch here. And this is a Black Diver watch. Yeah, I know you've seen this once, you've seen them all, right? But I think there are a little bit, some little points, uh, some little features of this watch that uh, stand, makes it stand out from the rest of the uh, probably Seiko Power NH35 <laughs> dive watches. So this watch is a 42 millimeter case diameter watch. Uh, it is 13.4 millimeters thick. It has a lug width of 22 millimeters and the lug to lug uh, is around 49 millimeters. So this watch uh, will wear slightly bigger than uh, what I'm used to because uh, I usually go for 40 millimeters and below. But uh, I know that, you know, that's just for me. I have a smaller wrist and there are guys who really appreciate a slightly larger watch. And actually 42 millimeters used to be the norm back in the day a few years ago. It's only recently with uh, the Black Bay and so on that uh, you see people uh, gravitating towards smaller uh, case sizes. So it's very proportional in that sense. Yeah, you can tell that the, the case size, the lug to lug, the lug width is all very proportional. There's nothing that really makes the watch feel off in terms of the dimensions. And it has a 300 meter water resistance. So that is about 100 meters more than your usual 200 meters water resistance. So definitely feel confident uh, in taking this into the pool or into the sea. And I also want to mention that the movement inside is a Seagull 1812. This movement has a 48 power, a 48 hour power reserve and is based on the ETA 2892. So if my research serves me right and serves me correctly, I believe the 2892 has a 42 hour power resistance, uh, a power, <laughs> power reserve. So sorry about that. So a 2892, ETA 2892, I think it has a 42 hour power Reserve and this watch with the Seagull 1812 has a 48 hour power reserve. This, co in comparison with, you know, like, uh, the, 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 the usual 28, ETA 2824 that has a 38 hour power, re power reserve. So that's really a huge bump up in terms of the number of hours you can go without having to wind this watch up. So I think that is something that uh, is really it sets it apart from the other watches of this price range. I think uh, it is quite rare that you see companies explore different movements and and really think out of the box in terms of what to use to power their watches. Yeah, you know the usual Seiko NH35s, the usual ETA 2824s or the SW200s. 
uh, he's gone with a less traditional Seagull 1812 with a little bit of extra power reserve for people who need a little bit more of that. So what else? We have a see-through case back. Yep. So you can see the movement there. Yeah. And uh, I believe the rotor is also custom to the Jonathan Broughton long shot. So as you can see, there's some literature here. Water resistant, 300 meters, automatic, stainless steel, Jonathan Broughton. Yep. And also what I want to point out is that the variant that was sent to me it has this integrated rubber strap. And I think this is really very, very well done. Yeah, because uh, when you buy watches these days uh, on the bracelet, yeah, you know, bracelet is, is pretty is, is pretty much uh, what people always say you should go for. But for me, if it comes with an integrated strap like this, I prefer it to a bracelet because it is not easy to do these, these straps right. And the material is FKM rubber as well. So it'll be a lot more pliable uh, than than you know the, the cheap rubber as well as less less uh, of, of, of a dust magnet as compared to silicone watches. So as you can see here, 22 uh, millimeters in width. And there's also a neat little trick. So over here, you have a ridge that will prevent the strap from coming out of the keeper. So I think that is also really, really re well done in that sense. So you can tell that this strap is not just a, a, a mass-produced strap that you can buy off of some some website. It is something that he put thought into uh, when he when he decided to to pair this watch with a rubber strap. So I believe that uh, the rubber strap is the one to go for if you if you are interested in this watch. And when now we're coming to the crystal, the crystal is a sapphire crystal. As you can see, there's a slight blue hue. So this would also be indicative of anti-reflective coating. So yeah, it really helps. Uh, my lights are pretty glaring, but you can see that uh, it does well to maintain the legibility of this watch. And the bezel is made of ceramic as well. So pretty much this is a very straightforward tool watch for someone who wants a dive watch that is both functional, not too gaudy. Of course, he has some other colorways uh, in the long shot lineup, but I think the black is the one to go for, especially if uh, you know, you're looking for a go anywhere, do everything sort of watch. So let me put this on wrist for you. Sorry, I have to do this off camera as usual. <laughs> and I can show you how it looks like on my 6.9, 6.8, 6.9 to 7 inch wrist, depending on the time of day, depending on the temperature. So like I mentioned, I prefer smaller watches, but as you can see, it does not hang out of my wrist, uh, the, the width of my wrist. So actually I can pull it off really well. Um, the, the watch, well, the, the thickness is also, it, it appears a bit thick on paper, 13.4 millimeters, but it is very proportionate to the 42 millimeter case diameter is proportionate to the luck to love of around 49 millimeters. And of course, this integrated strap is awesome. Look, there's a little bit of branding there. And also some more, wow, this is like a fiery logo for Jonathan Broughton watches, which is on the buckle. And this is what I'm talking about. So you will never have this keeper uh, you know, falling off or, or having the strap coming out of the keeper more so than the keeper falling off, yeah? You'll never have this flapping around. It will always be secured in place by this, this rubber piece here. So before I end this review, since this is a dive watch, I want to show you guys how the bezel is like. So as you can hear, very nice clicky action. Yep, and I also want to say at the end of the day, uh, the bezel lines up perfectly. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> so I, I just want to point out that there are no misalignment issues when it comes to the Jonathan Broughton long shot. As you can see, it is right smack in the center over there. Yep, so yeah, it may be the camera angle, but there is no issue with the alignment at all. So it is right smack in the center for me. And I think that this is something that unfortunately should be very standard across all watches of all price points because this is not difficult, this is not impossible to pull off. Uh, and I'm very pleased to report that the Jonathan Broughton watch does not have this problem. So let me put it back on wrist for you guys and give you guys a loom shot. So in my previous video, I mentioned that uh, I will be doing, you know, getting a UV torch and I finally got it. So 
this is the first video that I'm able to really show you guys a loom shot live. <laughs> so, all right, here we go. I think this is how you do it. And there. So there's a nice blue color hue. I think, I believe this is a BGW9 sort of loom application. And yes, it really goes well with this watch and with the understated black color look. So thank you guys so much for tuning into this review. If you're interested in a long shot, please head over to the description box below where you will find a link to his website and you can pick one up for your own. I think this is really a no-nonsense, a great go anywhere, do everything watch as I have mentioned earlier. So look forward to having you guys on my channel again for more reviews, more tips and tricks. Uh, we'll see what I am able to come up with. And thank you all. Please stay safe and stay healthy.